Oh my goodness, Hallie. I am so excited. I feel like we already had a pre pre episode <laughs> conversation, but we totally I'm so excited did. to d- dive in with you. Welcome. Welcome to entrepreneur school. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Kelly. This is so great. And I love just the universal connection because I know we both participated in the impact and income summit, and then we connected and then there was this great synergy and then talking about entrepreneurship and how that relates to manifestation and attracting abundance and calling in all of these beautiful things to our business. It's a match made in heaven. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm like so excited to talk about this topic of manifestation because I think that there's a lot of different perspectives on it. And depending on whoever's listening, where you fall, I want you to like figure out um, how this can work for for you, how you can work with this like reality of the law of attraction. And um, we're here to ask, I'm going to ask all of these silly questions. I'm going to do it. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to ask like, I'm stupid. Please tell me how to figure this out. And then Hallie has agreed to even do like a coaching session so that you can see how she helps her clients work through figuring out how to actually attract the things that you want. So I'm so excited about it. Oh, well, I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. And I told you before, you know, we hit record that my, my mission in this lifetime is to help people live what I call your fuck yes life, which is really about not just a life that's pretty good or thumbs up or yeah, I like it, but it's like, fuck yes, I love my life. And for me, that's where manifestation begins is having that commitment to yourself and that understanding that you, along with whether you call it the universe or God or source, or even just your inner wisdom, but you are co-creating this beautiful life for yourself that lights you up every single day. And that you, even on your worst days, this is not toxic positivity and just always having a smile on your face and pretending that everything is good. This is, I believe so deeply that I am living in my sole purpose, that my life is meant to be a gift, a treasure. I meant to wake up and say, fuck yes, this is my life. And I am so grateful and I am so joyful. That's what my, my mission on this, on this earth in this lifetime is to help more people step into that. Oh, I love that so much. And we are so aligned because you're coming from that, uh, at that, from the like perspective of manifestation and helping people with that part of the tool. And I also come at that from that brand perspective and helping you when you have that connection and are able to identify it and are able to see that it is actually possible for you to do better and to do more and have more and be more and be everything that you're meant to be that like, and it ties in so nicely into entrepreneurship. Like, I think this is one of the great opportunities that we have when we run our own business and get to define everything about it. Right. And then you bring in the piece around like, well, and let's make that happen. Absolutely. And so much of what we do in this world, I believe that most humans want to show up in a place of service. And whether that is presented through your entrepreneurship, whether that's presented through your family life, through community involvement, wherever that shows up for you in your life, being of service is of the highest vibrational frequency. Mm -hmm. And that lights us up. And so when you have this drive to be an entrepreneur, which you and I know, I mean, this is a wild ride and everybody listening knows like if you're an entrepreneur, it is not easy. There's nothing easy about being an entrepreneur. There's this romanticized idea that being an entrepreneur means, oh, you get to make your own schedule. You don't have to work. You get to make all this money. Yes. And it kicks your ass a lot of the time. Oh yeah. So, but it's this expression of self where you get to really show up in your power. And when you can understand that you have so much agency to show up both in your business and in your personal life to create. That's where it gets really exciting. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Let's dive into the like logistics. Okay. Okay. Because I was saying to you, like, I don't understand like how, like I get that it's a thing. Manifestation is a thing. People, we like to talk about it, but here's what I know that it's not. It's not just like sitting on your ass and wishing that something would happen. So like, how, how does it work in terms of, like, how does it work? Just how do you even start that? I I love it. And I want to just start this conversation by saying when we were messaging back and forth, listening to your questions and just really feeling into your energy, Kelly, I could tell that you are what I I've identified four different manifestation archetypes. And Mm -hmm. I call you the fact finder. That is the manifestation archetype, which I'm working on a quiz potentially that may come out. So if anybody listening is curious what your own archetype is, drop me a DM and we'll have a chat. But the 
I love that you come at it from this place of knowing, of wanting to know the details, of wanting to understand the process, because that will give you a sense of safety Mm -hmm. and a sense of trust. And I know that's an important word for you. Yes. So what is manifestation? I see manifestation as the creation of life, the creation of energy, the creation of becoming a vibrational match to whatever it is that you desire. Mm. And we could break that down a little further because people listening might be like, well, what the heck is a vibrational match? What does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> so if, if we kind of take a step back and you think about energy and if you can give, give kind of some leeway to the fact that everything that we know has an energetic frequency, meaning as people, obviously we talk about being high vibe or low vibe. And what does that mean? It means that we radiate at different different frequencies. You know, when you walk into a room, like a networking event, for example, Mm -hmm. and there's a buzz and there's people chatting and networking and maybe exchanging cards or social media handles or whatever it is, you can feel that energy and we call it a buzz versus if you walk into a more somber situation and it's very low energy and it's very quiet and it's very serious. And you might notice that, Ooh, I need to lower my tone. I need to lower Mm -hmm. my volume. Mm -hmm. I need to slow down in how I'm moving in this space. So that's an example of vibrational frequency, but everything in the universe has a vibration. Everything has an energetic frequency. And so your desires also have an energetic frequency, whether it's money, whether it's growth in your business, whether it's a partner that you are, you know, hoping to connect with, to manifest into your life in a romantic way, everything has a vibrational frequency. And so manifestation is about how do I step into the energy, my, my most authentic energy to create this vibrational match to whatever the thing is so that I can attract it into my life Mm -hmm. because the law of attraction says like attracts like. Mm -hmm. And so how do I become a match to attract the thing that I desire? So how do you know what the frequency of the thing you desire is? It's a great question. And, and, and we have to get away from really needing like a number or a specific metric. So Mm -hmm. think about, and I know one of the things you want to talk about is money. Mm -hmm. So I like to look at frequencies by the emotions and the feelings that they evoke within you. Okay. That makes sense. So that that's for me, that's a good metric because yes, are there sound waves that people measure for frequencies of different things. Yes. Right. But right. That like we can't literally me, that's be two like, in the weeds. That's two in the weeds for me. No, no. I don't right. have one of those like decibel meters. Yeah, can't exactly. walk around with that and be like, right. okay, well, how do I make myself I mean, to get that? I mean, that would be kind of cool, right? Like, okay, I want that car. Hmm, zap. What's your, what's your reading? <laughs> what's your vibrational frequency? How do I get to that place? She's working on inventing that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's coming next. So when you think of money, Kelly, tell me what are some of the feelings that it, it evokes for you? Um, like excitement because like freedom, um, like fun. I think about the things I can do with money, right. What I want it for, which is vacations and travel and maybe like a new house and what I have, like doing things like that. That's what I think about with money and And, and yeah, like, uh, also security, right. Like, yeah not feel worry about certain things and that, you know, my family will be good and that kind of stuff. And when you have those feelings, so like when you think about the feeling of safety and security, especially with your family, how does that make you feel in your body? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, like calm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you think about having enough money to pay for a first class round trip, result luxury resort trip for your whole family. How does that make you feel? That's like higher vibe, like excitement, like, and pride. Yeah. And where do you feel that in your body? I feel that higher. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's coming up, like in my like heart space kind of. Yeah. I'm seeing heart and maybe also throat, which is yeah. your center of communication. Yeah. Cause I see with your hand, you know, going like, to, yeah, it here. it's <laughs> right? here. People it's here. It's great. Right. The podcast is also on YouTube. If you'd like a, a visual, yeah, if you want to watch the visual. So, so I would say that the energetic frequency of money for you 
has this feeling of both peace and calm, which is probably lower. I imagine mm-hmm. that that's mm-hmm. more in your stomach and your mm-hmm. root so that you get a lot of, you know, kind of the lower region of your, of your belly. And then this excitement, this pride, that's going to be more in your heart space and in your throat space. And so to become a match for the money that you desire, it's about feeling those feelings in all the ways before you have the money, like what else gives you that feeling? Mm -hmm. So what else brings you that feeling? That's how you start to become a match. So can you feel those same feelings that you just described ahead of having the money deposited in your bank accounts? I love that distinction because I've heard it said like, like you basically, you have to behave as though it's already here, Mm -hmm. right? But then your mind gets in the way and is like, but it's not. <laughs> so how Absolutely. do I? And you're saying there's going to be other things that make you feel the way that you believe that you will feel when you have the thing that you want. Yeah. So start like leaning into that right now. Exactly. It's like, it's like then a step, I'm, I'm visualizing like, like a sidestep then yep. because you're already on the same level. Right. Because so becoming an energetic match for the thing you desire means that you're living your life at that frequency in the present moment. And I mean, there's so many, so many studies that have shown that the, the only thing we know right now is the moment. We only have the present moment, what happened in our past or what's coming in our future. We don't really know, but when we can be in the present moment, our body does this really cool thing where it just relaxes and settles into this space. Now your present moment, if your present reality that you're really leaning into is one of fear, is one of insecurity, is one of depression, then you're going to embody that energy. You're going to feel low. You're going to feel sad. You're probably going to feel that, you know, your heart is going to feel heavy Mm -hmm. and that's what you're going to be attracting into your life. And we've all been in that space. I mean, think about a time when you have been really upset about something and you're consumed with that energy. And that's what your present reality looks like. And until you, by either external force or internal desire, shift into a different state, you stay in that space. So the idea of manifestation is how can I embody where I want to go right now in the present moment by being that energetic frequency. And some people can get there through methods like journaling or meditation. Movement is a great one. Music Mm -hmm. is a great one, but some people need to take actions. And so it can be the combination. For example, if you think about what is something that makes you feel really excited and that same kind of pride that you might feel when you go on that vacation, can you think of something that you do regularly that gives you that, that same sense of excitement? Um, yeah, maybe, maybe exercise, like working out. I'm always like proud when I do something. Yeah. Yeah. Challenging for my body. Yeah. And do you feel it while you're working out or when it's done? Usually both. Okay. Probably more when it's done. Yeah. That's, that's usually how I feel too. It's kind of like when you're in it, you're like, okay, I just need to get through this. But when you're done, you're like, hell yeah, I did that. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. So when you finish a workout, if you can give yourself even just a moment, It could be 30 to 60 seconds. You can hold it for as long as you want, but really just sit with that energy. Just lean into, how do I feel right now? My heart's racing. I've got the sweat on. I've got the the Mm post-workout glow. And I feel really proud of myself. I feel really excited. And if you lean into that and even put your hand on your heart so that you can really connect to your physical body Mm. and you close your eyes maybe, and you just say, wow, I feel really good. And you just kind of expand on that in your self-talk. I feel really good. I'm super proud of myself. That was such a hard workout and I did it. I'm such a badass. Oh my gosh, this is so exciting. I look so good when I'm working out, when I'm doing those weights or when I'm you know, on my run or whatever it is that you just did. I'm just feeling so confident. I feel so good. I can take over anything that I want to take over. I can do anything that I want to do, right? And you pump yourself up, you give yourself that, that moment. And then when you're in that state, If you can say, okay, I am calling in this luxury vacation that I'm flying my family round trip, first class to Bali. And we're staying at this luxury resort and it is so awesome. And I can see those crystal blue waters and this, you know, amazing cabana that we're, you know, Mm. hanging out in and beach hut and the whole, the whole nine, (laughs) the beach, the beach hut. So exactly. Right. 
Okay. So a couple of things, I have like so many follow-up questions, but one thing that you're saying, like in terms of an actual practice, I'm hearing you say self-talk, yep. like connecting to the feeling, the awesome feeling and telling yourself how awesome it is and that yep. you're capable. And then at the same time, asking for what you want. Yes. Mm-hmm. So when you're in that elevated state, when you're in that space of, I feel so good right now, that's when you're in the match state. So when you're in the match state, really visualize and lean into your, into your manifestations, really lean into your dreams, because that's going to be like the prime time to do it. Not when you're sitting at your desk, cranking out some emails or, okay, I really want to manifest my dream vacation. You're not in that space. Thank you. Because I was like, okay, I'm doing the things I'm like I said to you before, I like rules. I like, I like practices and habits and I'm willing to do it. But you know, I was finding myself sitting down at in my morning and trying to make like a practice of gratitude and like, and do like five gratitudes and then like write down what my dreams are. And then I was just finding myself like just going through the motions and it wasn't feeling connected to it. And I'm like, well, this feels like bullshit now. So I don't think this is working. Like there's gotta be a different way or a better way. So you're saying like, get in state and then do it. Yeah, because it, it's really manifestation is about embodiment. Mm. It's not a thinking thing. So even for fact finders, because I know you want to be logical and I know you want to be cerebral and you want to think through it and you want to know all the things. Now, there are lots of things that you can learn. So if, if you're really interested in, you know, I've got to kind of build up my armor, my toolbox of ideas, practices, psychology, mindset, like I have to know why this works you know, you could you know, commit maybe 30 minutes a day for a week or every other day and say, I'm going to do some n- neuroscience Googling. I'm going to look up, you know, why do affirmations work? There's been countless studies that show why positive self-affirmations work, why they change your mindset, why they help you move from feeling one way to moving to another way. Um, you know, you can do those things and that might give you some confidence and that might give you just some knowledge so that you feel more secure in what you're doing. But the other thing that you have to do is put all that away and start to lean into trusting yourself. Because while it's really great to know the ins and outs, the facts, it's also this duality of, I have to lean into my body and I have to get out of my head and I have to drop into my heart space. And so much of manifestation is not just about the doing, but it's about the being. And that's one of the things that I work with my clients on is how do we be How can we be more and do less? I mean, there's been countless studies on this as well, where people talk about, you know, it's not just about us hitting it hard and hustling this hustle culture that burns us out, especially as women. Yeah, absolutely. And as much as I am like team action taker, people on this podcast have heard me talk about taking messy action and like creating momentum and stuff all the time. I also believe in resting and trusting. And like I said to you, my word for the year is trust. And that, that like, and and the reality, even I've seen an example of this happen in my own life recently. I I went on strike. I'm like, I'm not going to work so hard for a while because I'm tired as hell. And it wasn't like I stopped, like I stopped doing and efforting on a regular basis, but I saw that I'd already put things out there, right? Like balls were already in motion. So things started to come together from things I'd done before. So I could sit and like feel more of a like, okay, I'll just try and lean into like whatever's meant to happen is going to happen right now. And I'm not going to be attached to an outcome. And I did start to see some results. Like inquiries came in, projects came up. And I was like, where is this coming from? I got like a random affiliate payout while watching TV, like things just kind of came together in a lovely, magical way. And that's, that's the beauty of being. So also the, the thing is to like, it's not that we just sit back and say, we're doing nothing, but it's taking aligned action versus hustle action. And so, I, I mean, I had the, actually the same experience with writing the gratitudes and writing the goals. I did that for a long time. Like when I, and I love journaling for me, journaling is one of the most magical ways for me to lean into my desires, my feelings, my energies, my vibrations, so that I can really get to that match space with where I'm going. But when I first started my journaling practice, I was very specific about how I did it. And it was like formulaic. And I found that for me, following the formula really cut me off 
from being open to the possibilities because there's so many ways that we can get to where we want to go. And the thing is our brains only know what we know. So we can imagine and we can visualize and some people are better at it than others. And that's just practice. And some people, that's just how, how you are. You know, some people actually cannot see visions and that's okay. But like I said, some people are better at it than other people, but it's not about just doing things for the sake of doing things. And when I was forcing these dreams and writing them down every single day, I lost connection to them. And I found that it wasn't it wasn't connecting to my heart space. So I'm like, why am I writing these things down? And it wasn't necessarily that I didn't desire them, but because I was like forcing myself to go through this process, it stopped feeling authentic and it stopped feeling this emotional connection. So I realized for me that instead of going through this formula of you must write down the gratitude, you must write down the things that you're calling in, you must write down the things that you've done well. It was about experimenting with what do I need in the moment? And what do I want to feel in the moment? And how can my journal practice help me embody that space and expand into that energy? That's exactly how I felt about that. And so I'm loving this kind of idea of permission to do it a different way. (laughs) Yeah, it's freedom. Yes. I want to just circle back to one other thing, um, because you were talking about how when you're like maybe low vibe and in a, like a heavier energy from any number of things. And for me, that's usually like grief. Mm -hmm. up when I'm in a time, particularly like March is a month of like grief, um, trauma for me with my Mm -hmm. mom passing away in March. And I, so is there a time when you like, you don't manifest, like when you're like, I don't know, do you turn it on and off? Like if you're like in this mood, you just go like, maybe now is not a time to be like thinking about my, my dreams and what I'm trying to call in or like, what, what is it? How does that work? Well, I, I would argue that we're always manifesting, meaning that we're always creating because we're always in some state, in some vibration. It's just a matter of where are we putting our intention? Now, when you're in a state of grief, the best thing that you can do for yourself is nurture yourself is acknowledge how you're feeling. You know, it's honoring the grief, honoring the sadness, honoring whatever feelings are coming up for you and giving yourself full permission to be in that energy. But the other piece of it is that you have to remind yourself, I don't need to stay here forever. And there's been many studies. I think there's a Harvard study that talks about emotions that they actually go through you in about two minutes worth of time. So from the time that you feel an emotion until the time that it can like cycle through your energy, it's about two minutes worth of time. What happens a lot of times, however, is that we start to assign stories to the feeling. And so it expands. And so it starts living in our body for a much longer amount of time until we're finally ready to release the stories. So for example, if you're in a situation where you're remembering, you know, the passing of your mom, which of course is a very sad and grief moment. And maybe in that grief, you, that, that, that feeling of grief washes over you and you just feel instantly pretty depleted and heavy. And you want to constrict your physical body, constrict your energy. Now you could go a couple ways. If you start to dwell on, oh my gosh, I'm so sad. And it was so sad when this happened, when she was sick, or I don't know the circumstances, but whatever the the details were. And if you really focus on how much you're grieving, then you're going to notice that your body kind of feeds on that. Eckhart Tolle refers to this as the pain body. And so you keep feeding this pain, this depression, this grief, this sadness. Now on the other end, you could nurture that grief by saying, wow, I really acknowledge that I'm grieving, that I'm feeling sad right now. And I want to honor my mom, but I really want to spend some time thinking about our relationship and how important she was to me and how wonderful the time was that we had together. And so in that circumstance, while you're still grieving and honoring her, you're shifting your energy to a more expansive place because you're giving yourself permission to be in that present state of sadness, but also to see it through a lens of joy, a lens of gratitude for the time that you had together, maybe a lens of happiness for the moments and the memories. And so instead of feeding into the grief, you're expanding and you're just being present in the moment. And in that circumstance, the grief is going to actually flow through you much faster. And so you're going to start to embody different states, even if you're still honoring 
I just want to give myself some space right now because this is where, where I want to hold my energy. Yeah. Oh, that makes so much sense. Totally. So it's really just so much of this is about intentionality. Yeah. I where is it. my intention? Where do I want to spend my energy? Mm-hmm. Right. And that, and not in a forceful way though. Like there's a distinction there because you can't force yourself to be like, I'm sad, but I don't want to feel sad. So I'm going to make myself feel happy now. Correct. So if you feel sad, you can just say, I feel sad. I acknowledge the sadness and I'm safe to release it when I'm ready. I love to use the word safety because so often what happens is that we hold cellularly in our bodies, we hold these emotions and it's just an expression. The emotions are, excuse me, an expression of our heart space and we do hold them in our bodies and we get to honor them. We get to decide, right? And so if you decide, I feel sad and I want to feel sad for a bit. I want to cry. I want to curl up in a blanket. I want to watch a sad movie. I just want to feel that because that's what I need right now to feel whole, to feel complete. And I want to just kind of check out and just be there. Mm -hmm. But that's setting an intention. If -hmm. you feel sad, but you don't want to feel sad, like I suffer from anxiety on a somewhat regular basis. And I was having the other day, I was having an anxiety episode for no particular reason, but I could just feel it within my being. And I took myself on a walk because for me, I love to walk and move my body. And that just helps me move energy. And I talked to myself out loud, like the crazy person I am. And I said, you know, I'm feeling anxious right now. And I I acknowledge it, but I don't really want to feel anxious right now. I want this to move through me. And so I had to talk to myself about well, why am I feeling anxious right now? What are these feelings about? What is triggering this? Why is it coming up? And do I have to hold on to this or can I release it? And so ultimately at the end of the walk, 30 or 40 minutes later, I said, I'm releasing this anxiety. I don't want to hold it anymore. I don't have space for it today. I'm unavailable for my anxiety today. And so we get to decide. And that's really the thing about intentionality is you are the creator. You get to decide how you want to feel. But just know that if you choose to feel a lower vibrational frequency, whether it's sadness, anxious, fear, whatever it is, shame, if you choose that, then also give yourself permission to release it Mm -hmm. so that you don't have to stay there indefinitely. Right. It can, it gets to be temporary. It it's gets okay, to be temporary and it gets to be temporary. And exactly. I'm like, like I choose to release this. Okay. I love this. <laughs> Let's yeah. move back up into the, yeah. 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 <laughs> I choose to move on to something more exciting. We were going to, you know, but I'm also glad you brought this up <laughs> because it's so important that we honor all of who we are. Yeah. And as humans, we are complex. Yeah. And you know what? I think sometimes we just get we get down on ourselves because we're like, oh, well, I don't want to feel like bad or sad or like a failure, but like, actually that's just a normal experience to go through and it's okay. And you can feel like that. And you can also, you can share about it. Like I have been on this podcast being very open about things like that have been challenging and also still be encouraging. Like you can be all of it, right? You can feel all of it and you can be all of it. So I love that. So we were going to do a quick little deep dive into if I had a goal of something that I wanted to manifest, how would you guide me into, into making that happen? What would, what would be the practices that I should be implementing? And I'm going to like do this for real. Okay, cool. I love this. And then I'll report back like when it happens. (laughs) Okay. I love that. So first of all, tell us what you're manifesting. Okay. I would like to manifest $40,000. Okay. So, and by the way, I just want to give a caveat that when when you, you know, you or the audience, when you're manifesting, you don't have to tell anybody your manifestation. Obviously in a coaching relationship, you have to tell me, otherwise I can't coach you through it, but just know that you get to hold the energy of your manifestations and the details of them. Mm -hmm. If you choose to share them, that's up to you, but you never have to. So I just always want to create that. Like this is between you and your inner guidance, the universe coaching, et cetera. Okay. So so tell me more about that. So you want to manifest forty thousand dollars? Yes. Tell me. I know you have a time frame in mind. Well, tell yeah, I, w- I would like to do it within the next sixty days. Okay. And I would like that. And I don't know again, like what are the rules? <laughs> can I think that can I make that money come from my business? Okay. In some way, rather than like my husband's job or like a random something that comes from somewhere else. Like, can I put parameters like that around it? Okay. So the first question I would ask you is why do you want to manifest $40,000 and take a moment 
and just feel into that. And if you can answer it from a place of your emotions and your energy and your feelings, as we've been talking about, why is this important to you right now in particular? Mm. <laughs> I, like, cause I have like a logical reason right away yeah. like, first. Right. But I feel like that the question, well, on, like, say that too, that, say that too, uh, to like, to cover like debt. Okay. Yeah. Like to, to like pay off debt balance. Okay. That. Yeah. Um, that would be that, that, but like more for, oh, Ooh, I feel like it might not be a good emotion. Like it feels like, because I feel like I have to show my worth in that way. Okay. You good. Know? Good. Keep talking through that. Tell yeah. me more about that. But well, because I have this challenge where I, I very much like attached my identity and I'm working on like detaching identity to like financial success in business. Yep. Right. Yep. Because also sometimes like when it feels like I have accomplished something and then, I, and then it's like, like things were good and now they're not good. And I want them to be good again. And I know what it feels like for things to be good and at that place. So I, yeah, I, I think it would, it would be reassuring. Yeah. It would be reassuring. And how would you feel if, let's see, if 60 days from today, you haven't hit that $40,000. How do you feel about yourself? Yeah. Like shit. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like, like a failure, I guess. Ooh. Okay. okay. That's, but this is what we have to acknowledge. Yeah. This is what we have to acknowledge. Okay. So the other question, and this is, so your first assignment will be to journal about this. Hmm. Okay. So ask yourself, why do I want to manifest $40,000 and write out all those things. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say something to you. And I'm going to, I want you to write this down and I want you to journal on how this makes you feel. I want you to write down, I am worthy because I am. Hmm. What's your emotional response to that right now? It's like, thank you. Like reminder. Um, I forget that. Yeah. And so I, I, one of my courses uh, that I teach live is called Ignite. It's called, uh, the full title is Ignite, how to ma manifest, how to master manifestation and wealth. Couldn't get the words out. The very first module is called the energetics of worthiness mm -hmm. because everything in manifestation begins with your worthiness, begins with knowing that you're worthy because you are. So in your journal, when you write down, I am worthy because I am, I want you to really lean into that and ask yourself if you believe it. And this will be work that's just for you. And this will be something where you're going to uncover because you got to get real honest. This is not where your logical brain gets to really have a say. This is where your heart opens up and where you get to say, I don't think I am, or yes, I am, but I haven't been proving it to myself or showing myself or showing up for myself in that way. So really give yourself permission to lean into that worthiness because so much of your manifestation has to come from knowing that you're worthy because you are regardless of any external condition. Right. It's not about the $40,000. It's about making yourself, proving to yourself that you feel good, that you are worthy and that you're not a piece of shit. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that feels like the work right there for sure. Yeah. Like just- like you need sometimes like when we don't because we we it's so easy to go through any day just going through motions and not being super intentional about anything but and, and then that just like perpetuates sometimes these negative feelings that we might have about ourselves yeah and yeah. and this is the yeah this is like reminder positive something that you can insert here and it, like you said it's not just about like what you were calling it, toxic positivity and just, just say nice things to yourself and then everything will be better. Like, it's not just that it's, it's a belief in your core. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. So another question I want to ask you, is: you said, I want to manifest $40,000 in 60 days from my business and not from any other source. Right. Tell me where that comes from. Wanting to prove, I guess that the business itself is capable of doing that. Yeah. 
Do you believe your business is capable and worthy of producing that revenue? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Like, like it has, it's, it's been done. <laughs> yeah. So you have evidence, which is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. But not recently. Right. Right. So you want to get back up to that level. Yes. And you also know that business comes in cycles and seeds that you've planted will sprout up continuously in the future. Yeah. So there's two things that'll get to be fun here. And especially because you're a fact finder and you like to take action, which I love because aligned action is really powerful. This isn't mm -hmm. hustling action. This mm -hmm. is an action where you're doing for the sake of doing. This is intentional aligned action that matches you to the energy of the $40,000. So if we break that down, it's $30,000 in 30 days, right? So it's, or no, I'm sorry. It's $20,000. Yeah. My math went wrong. It's $20,000 <laughs> in 30 days. And that is where, so that, so if you want to break it down further, so it's $10,000 in 15 days. So that's $5,000 a week. Yes. Okay. So do you, so one, another exercise that you can do is what are the things that you can do to generate $5,000 a week? Right. How, how would you create that? So maybe you have products or maybe it's through coaching. So yes. one thing that you might want to do is write down all the ways that you could hit $5,000 in your business in a week. Mm, okay. So put that in front of you, keep that at the forefront. If you're going to be intentional and show up, let's look at where can this money come from? Right. Right. That makes sense. You have to, oh. just, you have to actually have a way to make the money. It yeah. doesn't just come out of nowhere, especially if I'm trying to be specific about wanting it to come from the business. Right. So what are some ways that you could get that $5,000 a week? Yeah. Like coaching, working with clients through different programs, like through one-on-one -on -one coaching, through VIP, um, through consulting. I have a, I have a proposal out right now that would probably cover most of that. <laughs> That's awesome. So one thing that might be really fun for you is start to get creative and play with this. So be in the energy of play, be in mm -hmm. the energy of fun, of feeling into that excitement around the money, remembering that it's not about, I don't want to feel like shit. It's, I want to be a match for feeling really confident and proud of myself, just like you did after you had that, that hard workout that you feel really good, really pumped. You're really excited about it. That's the energy that you want to bring to your manifestation. So have some fun coming up with, okay, what are all the creative ways that my business can generate $5,000 a week and make a list, write them down, get creative. See if you can play around. Maybe think about things that you've planted from two months ago, one month ago, six months ago, that could come to fruition in the next 60 days. So doing this, you're not attaching to it. You're not saying it has to come this way, but what you're doing is you're opening up the possibilities. And you know how, when you start to get creative about something and you start to brainstorm, it mm -hmm. brings more ideas. Mm -hmm. You might end up creating some new ideas that you haven't previously considered versus hitting your head against the wall and saying, Oh my God, I need $5,000 a week, 5,000. How do I get it? How do I get it? Right. So get into a state of play and fun and write down all the possibilities. And what I would write down it's this or something better. So this gives you an opening. I just looked up to the side because I have this sign that my dad got me for Christmas. And it yeah. says, someday we will find what we are looking for, or maybe not. Maybe we'll find something much greater than that. I love that. That is just exactly what you said, basically. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So this is how we, we detach from a specific outcome, but we're right. open to the possibilities. I love that distinction because it's still not like I can only feel proud of myself if I get the $40,000, right. I am proud of myself and this is what I will create. Exactly. How now, exactly. And remember, depending on how intentional you've been in your business, up until this point mm -hmm. is going to have some impact on where you get to with the $40,000. But just think if you come into starting today, you come into your business with this renewed energy, this excitement, this open possibilities to, I get to serve people in this way. I get to create $5,000 new revenue a week in my business. I get to be open to the possibilities and keep this stream of consciousness and this stream of awareness and this stream of creativity going. I'm so pumped about my business. 
Just imagine how that energy is going to continue to flow forward. Yeah. Especially if you're coming off of a month where you've been in grief and you've been in sadness, it's probably been hard to motivate. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to shift that because you're ready because you've declared I am ready and you're going to work through simultaneously that you're worthy because you are as in doesn't matter if the $40,000 shows up, you're still worthy. You're worthy right now. You've always been worthy. And when it shows up, you're going to feel fucking awesome, but you're always worthy. Like that has zero impact on your worth. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be your inner work Mm -hmm. that you're diving into. And the more fun kind of external manifestation is going to be around this opening up the creative channels and showing up in that space every day. Uh, How does that feel? No, so good. I love that because I don't even know how to articulate how I'm thinking about this. It's just, it's, and like, it's it's an, and thing. Like you can be working on believing in yourself and creating opportunities and taking intentional action and listening to your intuition and like, and, and yes. I love and I have it in my brand logo. Too. Yes. yes. And. I love the and do, do you use um, a whiteboard at your desk or post-its or any visual cues? Super fat, big fan of post-its. Okay, cool. So what I would recommend also while you're being intentional in these 60 days is put the the manifestation, put the $40,000 on post-its, but maybe also have a post-it that says $20,000 a month. And then another one that says $5,000 a week so that you have that in front of you. Because part of part of how you're going to reprogram your subconscious and stay in this energetic flow is giving yourself the environmental cues. And there's been a lot of research that shows when we have environmental cues, like affirmations, like our goals, like our dreams. I have a bunch of crystals and money and a rock on my desk that says purpose. And, you know, these are the things that, again, get me into that space. Because if we don't have the environmental cues, then we have to get it from inside. But that can be challenging. Mm -hmm. We don't always feel like we want to like dredge it up from the inside. So how can you make your life easier by using the tools like keeping the environmental cues in front of you? Mm-hmm. I love that. Okay. Here's the one like resistance point that's coming up. Yeah. Tell me what if in a week I haven't made $5,000. All right. So talk me through that. So what if like, in a week you haven't, how will I, you feel? I'm now like, Oh shit. Now I got to make 10 next week. And then I feel stressed. Like I'm anticipating that. Okay. Well then you're calling that in. Mm. So right now you're attracting that. Because now your mind is going into imagining the worst case scenario and it's saying, oh, I already, nope, I'm not making $5,000 this week. I'm going to be stressed because I have to make $10,000 the next week. Now, remember the money is going to come to you. However, it's going to come to you. You might have $40,000 on day 59. Right. The only reason to give yourself those micro manifestations is so that you can stay in the energy. So it's not a goal. It's not, I have to hit $5,000 this week. It's not that it's my intention. My energy is around a $5,000 week. How does it feel when I am bringing in $5,000 a week? What Mm -hmm. is that? How does that version of me operate at $5,000 a week? How does she show up every day? How does she sit when she's at her desk? How does she create content? How does she talk to her existing clients and to potential clients? What posts is she writing? The businesswoman that has, 40, that makes 20,000 a month. What, what is that version of me like? And that's the energy that you want to be in Mm, because we don't know you may or may not get $5,000 in a week. You may get six, you may get two, you may get 10. I don't know. You don't know, but you have to be in the continuous energy of this is what I'm calling in. So one way to look at it is looking at it as a, a energetic minimum, meaning I am energetically available for 5,000 per week or more. I am energetically available to receive this amount of money. And it's coming to me in ways that I can't even imagine. And the way that I'm going to feel really good about myself is that I know that every day I'm going to show up in this energy. I'm not hustling. I'm not working myself to death. I'm not making myself stressed or freaking out about the numbers 
but I'm showing up with my best intentional energy every day. So I'm doing the things that help support, you know, attracting new clients. I'm really visualizing and being in the energy of who are my dream clients? How do they show up? What do they need to know? Where do they come from? What is, what does my dream client need to know from me and how can I attract him or her into my life? Ooh, I like that. Okay. And then use that as your success points. Those are your metrics. I think what did I do today that was successful based on that? Yes. And you really now have just bridged the concept of manifestation from a just thinking and wishing and hoping. And I'm saying that sort of facetiously. Yeah. And the action piece, you put yep. it together. Like I do the things that support me attracting insert thing that you want. Yep, exactly. And and think about I it. On, I think on, that's going to be my like uh, affirmation. I love it. And think about it like in all parts of your life. So how do you yeah. embody it yeah. all the time? Yeah. Like how does the business owner that makes 20,000 a month, how does she show up in her family? Yeah. How does she show up when she wakes up in the morning? How does she show up when she's working out? Mm -hmm. Who, who is she? What are the thoughts in your head? And just notice them. Like you may get those thoughts initially that are like, you're not going to do it. You're not making this happen. I don't believe this is true. Can you start to notice those thoughts? Can you ask yourself, wait a second, are those true or are they lies? That's trying to keep me in a safe zone because our safe zone is never going to get us out of our is never going to get us to what we're manifesting. Mm. Our expansion comes from growth. Yeah. And our brain wants to keep us in the safety zone because yeah. it's comfortable because that's what it knows. And yeah. it doesn't want to create any sort of um, anything different. But you're so you are going to feel resistance. You probably will feel excitement, I would guess, for the first one to two weeks. You're yeah. going to be pumped. You're going to be excited. You're going to experience some wins. After a couple of weeks, when kind of the honeymoon period dies down, that's when the brain starts to insert fear, insert worry, insert doubt. This isn't working. I don't know. Blah, blah, blah. That's when you get to say to yourself, wait a second, I'm noticing those thoughts and they aren't real. They're lies. And I am showing up as the businesswoman who makes $20,000 a month, who makes $40,000 in 60 days. I'm worthy because I am. I am paying off my debt. I am energetically available to receive $40,000 in 60 days. and this is what I'm attracting into my life. Oh, this is so good. I am excited and I don't want to right? a honeymoon phase that ends. You um, don't have to, but you know, that's just kind of like what happens to our brain. So like, I think that again, makes sense. Like, knowing that you're, you're knowing that you like the facts and the rules. Yeah. You know, understanding the neuroscience of it. It's important. Right. Right. Why does my brain get really pumped and excited? And then it kind of like falls off. What happens with so many people is that in that space, when they start to feel the fear, the doubt, the worry, they give up. I'm done. This isn't working. I'm out of here. I can't do this anymore. But what if you give yourself permission to say, what if it all works out? Mm -hmm. How can I show up? What if it all works out? I am still pumped. I am still excited. I am still going to write the best email to my email list. I am still going to continue to brainstorm creative ways that I'm going to attract new business into my business. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I have to go do that now. <laughs> Yay. Are you excited? I am. Oh, this was so helpful because it really has just, and I, I'm sure that people listening are going to have the same experience. Like, like it, it's, it's given some structure to something that seems very ambiguous. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so helpful. I thank you so much for oh, you're so sharing welcome. your magic here today. And I'm sure everyone's going to be running to try and find you to figure out how to connect with you. So let I'll of course have it all in our in our show notes, but um, maybe just let us know where we can connect. Where's your the best place that you like to hang out? Yeah, well, come find me on Instagram. I think that's the best because then you can send me a DM and let me know that you listened or watched this episode. So my handle is at sassy, healthy fit. And if you go to my link in my bio, there's a bunch of free resources. You go to my website. I've got lots of content that I put out all the time to help you step into this energy of attracting the life that lights you the fuck up and that you're really excited about. That's, that's what I wish for you. And everything is possible. Everything is possible in more ways than you can imagine. And when you believe that that's true, you will show up differently in your life because you believe in yourself. 
I feel like I just want to add one more thing, which is you can choose to believe that it's possible or you can choose to believe that it's not. Either way, it's your choice. A hundred percent. Absolutely. So that just makes sense. Like, why would you choose to believe that it's not? Right. It's always your choice. You always have agency. There's intuition. There's the universe. There's astrology. There's guidance. There's all of that. And you have free will. You always get to choose and you choose how you show up every day. And when you choose to believe in yourself and when you choose to show up in this powerful energy, the magic can't help but flow to you. Mm, I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're so thank welcome. You. I'm excited for you. I can't wait to hear your progress and how you just create all this wealth in your business that's going to continue beyond the 60 days. Amazing. I will be reporting back for sure. Okay, good. Please do.